All right, construction <laughs> champions, it's your host, Ron Newsbaum, and we're here for another amazing episode of Construction Champions Podcast, where we're burning down the house and we're rebuilding it twice a week. Every Monday and Thursday, we are we bring in the absolute greatest in the industry. We have amazing conversations, and we talk about what it means to be a construction champion. I'm fired up today. Because Paul is back to join us. He's an amazing guy. Paul, it is great to have you on the show today. Well, thanks for having me here, Ron. I appreciate it. Awesome. For all I'll try to be as excited as you are. That's not easy, but I'll see what I can do. Okay. <laughs> wow. You you are an exciting individual. You've been around the industry for 40 plus years. Once again, I'm I, you know that does that does sound just like sometimes when you when you do it so long, you start cutting the time back. Like, you know. <laughs> My wife says it's 50. Go, no, let's go with 30. That sounds better because it makes me a you know a younger guy. So I try not to add the real time in there. That's not good. Well, let's just say a man with a ton of knowledge when it comes to construction and construction businesses. So that's true. I've done this a long time. I think I've worked with like 2,000 companies or some dumb number like that. It's amazing. But for all the construction champions out there that might have not heard the last episode you were on or might not know who you are, why don't you take a take some time here, introduce yourself, okay, tell everybody so out there about I've been about. working with contractors for 40 plus years. I've worked with a couple thousand contractors. Um, I was a coach forever, long time. And I literally earned $10 million an hour at a time, which takes 40 years to pull off, right? So it takes a long time. But I've learned a lot, and I, I actually drug contractors through um, through uh, what do you call it uh, technology a long time. This is an interesting thing. I started off when I started, Ron. There were no cell phones. There were pagers, and then then they said pagers. I remember trying to get them to use cell phones. They said cell phones are going to you know what is it reduce my peace of mind in the truck. So they didn't want to use cell phones. And then email was a fad, right? Uh, who needs email, right? And then websites, look at, I just answer the phone and do a good job. Websites for, for you know, sissies. I'm like, okay, fine. And then the one after that was um, project management software. You know, I've got my Excel spreadsheets. I don't need any darn project management software. I'm like, fine. And then the latest one is AI, right? Who needs AI? It's going to destroy the planet or fix it. I don't care. And I, and I just saw something in AI the other day. If you saw it run, Sora, which is coming out by ChatGPT. Have you seen that yet? Mm -hmm. you can literally say make a video on blah 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 and it does it like it's actually happening right <laughs> which is it's gonna like i wouldn't want to be a videographer at the moment because or producing code because it'll just do it all for you so you know i think ai is going to totally disrupt the construction industry the good news ron is that it's gonna be a long time before ai can actually put on a roof or do a remodel that'll be a while but it will be able to replace your attorney, your doctor, anybody that sells information for money, they gonna change it a lot. I've got one guy, for example, who's um, having an entire legal argument with the state of New York over some property and he's just using ChatGPT and not an attorney. So that's, that's gonna pretty amazing. Lot. So, I mean, I, I, it's exciting time to be around. Now, another thing that's happening, Ron, which is sort of an incidental is that Capital, you know, money like in general, <clears throat> where is capital going? Well, capital is now going into, they're buying up remodeling contractors, they're buying up roofing contractors, they're buying up all those people because that's, you know, they're trying to buy up stuff that AI is not going to displace. And it's not going to happen in construction, at least for the foreseeable future. You won't be able to 3D print your house. So now what's happening, I've noticed that a lot of capital is buying up like roofing companies and, and uh, all these other companies because they go, wow, I got to put my money someplace where AI is going disrupt to the, disrupt the industry. And where there's now maybe if you look in a town, there might be, you know, a decent sized community is probably, you know, 10 roofing, 20 roofing contractors. There's going to be two, in my opinion, within four years. Hmm. And what's going to happen is the guys that are... are um, Willing to adapt technology may still be around, but those people that don't, well, and it's sort of like, I just saw the movie Spotify, but um, the the artist that said, I'm going to, I'm not going to adapt streaming music, you know, oh, well, <laughs> CDs are gone, right? 
Um, and what's going to happen in this industry, I believe, is that a lot of capital is coming in. And instead of having, you know, in a big city, a bunch of plumbing contractors, all these service contractors are going to be bought up um, by other people. In fact, I talked to a guy the other day who had, was a venture capitalist, right? Like millions. And he decided the best use of his millions was to go into the roofing business in the middle of the country, given all the things he could do with his millions of dollars, which I found very interesting, right? And I said, why? He goes, well, first place in this, let's say you know, in the Midwest, there's the old guys, right? They're not going to change. They're going to retire soon. They're going to see the same old ways. There's the two guys in a truck which don't want to adopt technology. And so I can go into that town and start from scratch and own that market in three years because I'm adapting technology, right? And because you just basically need good clients and good employees. So they adapt technology to good employees, adapt technology to good, good clients, use all this AI stuff. You're just going to, you know, they got a back on it. It's got a shovel. They're going to lose. Hmm. So if you're listening to this podcast and you have any kind of a service industry, I would get on the technology bandwagon <laughs> quickly because if not, you will probably not be around in five years. Hmm. That makes sense, Ron? Yeah, no, that absolutely makes sense. So a wealth so, of knowledge, man. It, it is because I see this happening all the time. So you need to adapt to technology. If you're going to stay in business, you need two things as a contractor that matter. Great clients and great employees, right? Because the great clients, you get through marketing and doing effective marketing, and it's getting way better and cheaper to do if you say how to do it. And also um, getting good employees, which we're really good at. And I can explain how you do that. So you, you just adapt or die. I can't put any better way, right? Yeah. So, I mean, time. I think... I think that might be the answer to our million dollar question, which is, you know, what makes a construction champion here? Yeah, it's adapt or die. I mean, because if you don't, it, it happened a little bit before, because, you know, when you look at cell phones, it sort of happened gradually over time. Right. And then there was, you know, email and the, the industry sort of been chugging along. But this is going to affect the ownership who owns the construction industry. And it's going to be large capital versus two guys in a truck. It's been a fractionalized industry ever since I've been in it for the last 40 years. And that's now about to end. Like if you look at the corner drugstore, they're gone, right? The independent doctor, they're gone. The independent contractor, maybe gone. <laughs> so, no, so, I mean, I, I, I mean, I agree with that. Like there's, I watched private equity come in and start to, and not even just private equity, just people deciding that they're going to own a bigger market share and how they're going to quickly do that is by going out and acquiring other businesses to grow market share faster and then just implement what they're already utilizing right. to help scale that business. And but I talked, I talked to a guy the other day, he does roofing and siding, right? He has given a thousand to two thousand employees. I can't only mention the company's name. He's hiring fifty people a week, <laughs> and they're basically knocking on doors. That's his model to get roofing and siding jobs, and they're just spreading like crazy. They've grown like they're, I think they're like seven six hundred million now, something like that, and they're growing as because what's happening is that. The, unfortunately, the, the contractors, it used to be not adapting to, to technology was not fatal. It was just didn't help. You know what I mean? Because if it took a while to get a cell phone, it's not going to be out of business. If it took a while to adapt, project management software not going to kill you. If you don't have a website, eh, you know, you can still sort of hang in there. But that didn't involve your competitor like, kicking your butt. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that, that didn't involve somebody coming into town and you're, you know, there's five roofing companies. And then all of a sudden there's one roofing company that owns 80% of market share. They either bought the other guys or put them out of business. So it's an exciting time, but it's sort of scary. I mean, you got to adapt or die here. So I'm going to go into, you know, how to use technology to re recruit. But I think in general, it's the same for marketing. I know, you know, builder cams is out there as technology. You've got to adapt to this technology because 
I, there's another pro tech guy show there was Protiv, and he has a, an app you put on your phone, and literally everybody on the job can know how they're making or losing money for the company that day, transfers to a bonus system, and then it goes in their paycheck the next week. It's all technology. So, you know, I can all I can say, guys, is the one I can tell after being 40 years is adapt or die. It's never been quite this serious in the past because it was slower. You know, I mean, it took like a while to get cell phones, a while to get to um, project management software. They're still working on it. They, they weren't driven by a lot of capital, though. They were driven. They weren't buying up businesses. They were trying to transform the way the current industry is working by having that industry adopt technology, right? which is different than them coming up and owning the marketplace. So just my two bits worth guys, be aware. Okay. So with that being said is how is technology going to change recruiting within? Well, the I'll, I'll tell you what we use it, for example, like, so I'm going to give you the best are the, the best practices for doing for hiring. I've learned those. We go through about three to 4,000 resumes a week. We hire, we have 400 job ads any given day. Um, and we have to go through 200 resumes to find a guy. And we do it for way less than we can do it for everybody like 15 bucks a month. Cause we use a lot of artificial intelligence and a lot of offshore labor and it makes it way cheaper, better, faster, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll tell you what you need to do if you're gonna do it yourself or hire somebody else to do it. But these are the basics. One is the art of the job ad. Chat GPT has made it so easy. You can go in and say, I need a, I need an ad for a you know project manager. I'm a construction company in Cincinnati, blah, blah, blah. Write the ad. It'll write the ad. Say, this is a little boring. Make it more interesting. It'll keep messing with the ad until you do it. Now, pretty soon, you're going to be able to say, make a video, right? And it'll make the damn video, right? That's just like three or four months away. But for right now, it'll write the job, job ad for you. So write an ad. Again, it's an ad. It is not a job description. You're trying to get somebody to quit their job and come to work for you. Like you're trying to get a customer, you know? You don't write an ad for your services by saying, you know, we're a good roofing company. We've been in business 20 years, but that doesn't get you. You say, is your roof leaking? Are you upset? <laughs> you gotta get to some emotional bond here, right? So when you write a job ad, say, does your boss not respect you the way he should? Do you feel like you're the best guy on the team and you're not getting compensated appropriately? Are you not excited about going to work on Monday? Make it something, though, it's, it's appealing to their emotion, not just we need a project manager that has five years of experience, blah, 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 blah. Boring. All right. So make the ad, make an ad that you would, somebody's going to quit their current job and come to work for you. Because I guarantee you don't want to hire anybody right now in construction that doesn't have a job. Because they're not worth hiring. So your mission is to get the guy or woman to quit their job and come to work for you. So that ad has to inspire them to take that shot. Okay, so the ad is crucial. It's got to be exciting and interesting. Next, where do you post the ad? Everywhere. You don't write a boring ad, put it on Indeed and wait a week. That sucks. Doesn't work. <laughs> All right. So what you do is you write a really great ad and then you post it everywhere. We, when we post an ad, it goes on 100 job boards. It goes into LinkedIn. It goes into social media. It goes to Monster. Any place you can possibly put an ad. We hit one button on our applicant tracking system, and it goes everywhere in real time. Boom, done. And even put posters in your supplier's offices, man. Put it everywhere. Don't count on one source. Make sure you put it everywhere. Well, that's what we do, okay? Next, this is the hard part, Ron. This is the real hard part respond in minutes to the time they apply. That's not easy. And I said, when somebody applies to us, we respond in real time. So if you hit the button and go, I want a job as a project manager, the minute you hit that button, five seconds later, you go, thanks for applying as project manager. We're really interested in your resume. We like blah, 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 blah. How do we do that? AI, right? So <clears throat> then we have a real person who looks over the eye and, and starts getting back to these people. So. Now, we respond to 3,000 ads a week in real time, all right? This is what's hard for a contractor to do because what happens is if you don't get back in real time, it's just like a customer is going to buy something, Ron. If they say, you know, my roof leaks or I feel like doing a remodel or whatever, and they call somebody and they don't answer the phone, they just go to the next guy, right? 
they're going down a list. And if you don't answer the phone, you're done. The same thing when people are looking for a job. If you apply for 10, you're going to go down Greg's list or whatever you're going to go down. Indeed, you're going to apply for seven jobs in 10 minutes. The one that goes, thank you for applying, that company has a better shot, right? Go, wow, this company has their act together. They got back to me right away. Guy got back to me in a week, not so good. Probably get another job. So get back to people in real time. Not easy. We we have you know 30 people on our staff, and that's what we do plus AI. So we get back to people in real time. And then we say, thank you for applying, blah, blah, blah. So get back to people immediately. I'll tell you, we've done it. It takes on the average 200 applicants to fill one position. Hmm. So just think about trying to get back to 200 applicants in real time to follow to, to hire a carpenter. May not happen. That's why you need to hire somebody else to do it. But if you can do it, that's what you should do. It works great, all right? So you gotta respond immediately. Next one, make sure you use assessments. I mean, I've got assessments. I'll know more about you than your mom if you take this thing, right? Um, it tells all about them psychologically, their behavior, their intelligence, their emotional intelligence, their analytical intelligence. I know all about this person. Now, admittedly, if you're applying for a job as a laborer, <clears throat> maybe hard to get them to take it. If you're applying for a job as a painter, you probably can't come much longer after dinner. You got a window between dinner, <laughs> dinner and the time they go watch TV and the time they come home, right? So you got to adapt it. I know we we hired 100 and 65 carpenters in three months and everything was in Spanish. Nothing was in English. Nobody spoke any English, but that was fine. We adapted to that. So get back to people, do an assessment. There's lots of that you can use a Kobe, you can use DISC, you can use, there's a lot of assessments out there. <clears throat> Make sure you assess the person so you know who they are as a person. For example, we hire a lot of offshore labor. <clears throat> um, we always are looking for people, always. And we, I would say, we have to go at least two to 300 people before somebody actually passes the assessment. But our team is to die for. I mean, think about everybody on our team working for us, the top 1% of doing what they do. They're really smart. They're really intelligent. They've got, you know, the business acumen as well as everything else. And we know all that before we talk to them. Okay. So make sure you do an assessment. Okay. There's a lot of stuff out there. Next, do a video interview. We, and as part of what we do on our screening, we do video inter video interviews for everybody. A one-way video interview, there's services out there that'll do that. But there's some things you can't tell on assessment. What's their personality? What do they look like? What do they come across? How do they speak? We have people that have to do it Spanish and English. So you can't tell that from an assessment. Between But between an assessment and a video, you pretty much know who this person is. Now you got the assessment, you got the video, and you respond immediately. Now you're looking at your pipeline here and you've gone through 200 people to find the guy or girl. Then you got to do reference checks, all right? They're crucial. I have a sample of a guy, this true story. He got embezzled by his bookkeeper. He had another bookkeeper. She embezzled him, called the DA. And the DA said, did you know that this woman got embezzled or fired from her last job for embezzling? He didn't even check it out. I mean, come on, right? So... Do do reference checks. That's crucial. All right. And they also do background checks. You can get a background check for like 2,500 bucks these days. Do a background check. We do background checks and reference checks on everybody. I mean, I think the industry average is probably less than 50% to work out. We hired 480 people last year and 17 work out. We got like a 96% success of hire. Why do we get that high success? Because we do all this stuff, right? And if you write the right ad, you post it all over the place. You respond in seconds, not days. You do a really good assessment. You do reference checks and backgrounds. You can probably be 95% too. You got to do all the work, but that's fine. Okay. So that's how you should do it. I mean, I couldn't agree more. It's so, so many stories that just go through my mind of stuff that in the past I've done right, I've done wrong. And then when you talk about technology, just making it, a lot more easier, but at the same time, it still takes some of the old score tactics to get it done. Like you can't just be like, oh, here's AI. It's going to hire me all these people. Now, now what interesting thing is we're working on it now. 
AI was, we're almost there. We got it maybe another 12 months ago where AI is going to do the interview. You're going to talk to AI, not a real person. And they'll say, what, you know, what do you do? And you have a conversation. I tried it and it worked really well, except it was a little delayed, but it was like time, talking to a person, like, tell me about the job. Why do I qualify? How's the employer? Is it a job I want to do? Yeah. Tell me your qualifications. It's like a normal interview asking all the same questions. We can get, it's really close to, you won't know it from a real person. Hmm. <laughs> if we get into the bad news, we're almost here. So, and I've got, if you have any more time, I like to cover one subject, maybe doing our next podcast where the myths of the, the six myths, the people get in, in trouble. We can do that now or another podcast, your call. Yeah, let's dive right into it. Why not? Okay, let's go for it. You got it. Okay, this is why contractors suck at hiring. All right, is that blunt enough? <laughs> okay, they believe these things which are not true. I call them myths. One. First, only recruit when you need someone. That's so wrong. Because what happens is contractors need a project manager. I look for a project manager. I'm done, right? Only recruit needs somebody. <clears throat> Any good company in this country or other countries is recruiting all the time. You never stop recruiting. You never know when that unicorn is out there, somebody who knows every architect in town, knows every subcontractor in town, and you can hire the guy and he brings all the subcontractors and five million of business with the day you hire him. You never know. So only recruit when you need someone is not true. It's a myth. You should be recruiting all the time. Don't ever stop. In fact, I, I, I went through 187 clients last year. They all quit for the same reason. You guys are awesome. You know, you found all my people were done. I go, no, no, no. I had to change my entire pricing structure. Now it's 3,000 bucks a month at a time, but 1,500 bucks if you sign up for a year. I had to make it so financially advantageous they wouldn't say no because <clears throat> I wasn't succeeding the other way. <clears throat> Next myth, employees are expensive. I can't afford that, guys. It's $120,000 a year. You can't make money without employees. That's what you do. You know, no employees, no cash. And don't be cheap. It won't serve you. Employees are the best investment you're going to make. And I've talked to guys, oh, I can't afford that guy. Really, you can't not afford to hire him. And also when you're looking out there, don't, don't try to get by cheap. It's like tying a cheap brain surgeon. Not a good idea, right? <laughs> I mean, it's like bad. So pay market or above market. Now this creates a problem for some people, Ron. The problem is they're currently paying all their employees under market. They haven't found anybody one. And say that they're, they say they're paying the project manager. Now, it varies a lot. I can hire a killer project manager in Mountain Home, Arkansas for $65,000 a year. The same guy in San Francisco is $140,000 a year. The exact same guy. So it depends on your market, right? So make sure that employees are expensive. You pay a little above market. Now, maybe the problem because you're paying all your project managers, you know, $80,000 a year, and you find the market price is one hundred and ten. dollars What are you going to do, right? Because you're not bring they've all worked for you for five years. You're bringing this new guy and pay them more than you're paying the people who work for you. It's a problem. So stay up with the market. When you go look for people, you got to pay market. To, you got to give them a quit his job to come work for you. So he's got to pay a market. Make sure you're paying your employees market value, or they'll leave and go someplace else. Mm. Right. So employees are not expensive. They're a great opportunity. Third myth: We can do this ourselves. How hard is it? I put an ad in Indeed. I call the guy a week later, I'll find the guy. Then the, oh, there's no good people out there. I can't find anybody. That's because you're not doing it well, right? It's like, if you can't find any customers, it's not your, it's not, you know, the market's fault. You're not doing the right marketing. I have a saying that if you, you know, if you run out of water in the desert, it's not the desert's fault, guy, right? So and we find good people all the time. So if you're not finding good people, it's your problem. <clears throat> There are lots of good people out there. <clears throat> if you're not finding good customers, it's your problem. But if you're not good at marketing or you're not good at recruiting, don't think you're going to be, don't hire somebody who's good at it. <clears throat> you hire us or somebody else to recruiting, hire a good person marketing because you're only as good as your customer and your employees. And if you're not good at marketing, admit it and hire a marketing. If you're not good at recruiting, admit it and hire a recruiting company. Right? Our models are a little different. We charge like a monthly fee, which is lower than most, but it's still, you, you can't do it yourself and do a good job. It's like, you know, Ron, do you do your own accounting? No, no. 
Um, <laughs> you need these now. Do you fix your own car? <laughs> no. Right. I mean, you need a damn computer to fix a car, right? I mean, yeah. so it's, you don't have the right tools, all right? So don't try to do it yourself. That's the second myth. Next one. This is a big one. Recruit within the construction industry. I want somebody that's got 10 years experience in construction. I want a project manager that knows a lot about construction. Not true. If you look at Lennar and D.R. Horton, they won't even take people with, with a background in construction. Because they have to reteach them the Lennar or the, you know, D.R. Horton way, right? And they wouldn't have to reprogram somebody. So they won't even take people with construction history. So an example would be um, office managers or uh, selection coordinators. Wedding planners make killer selection coordinators. Now think about that. What's a wedding planner do? You got a bunch of questionable industries, <laughs> the band, <laughs> the flower person, the venue, the caterer. All these kind of nah, 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 kind of people, they all got to get the red at the right time. They have to make the client happy. It's got to look really good and everybody has to be happy. Sounds like a remodel to me. So that thing about, you can put construction industry preferred, but not required. Look out, we we hire a lot of people that run companies. They ran hotels and a construction business. They're really good at it. So don't get stuck on that. They have to have construction experience. Not necessarily true. Okay. Next one, biggie. A lot of people hire fast and fire slow, which sucks, right? They hire fast because they're not recruiting all the time. They got the big project coming along. Oh my God, I just got this house or my project manager just quit. So they hire fast. They've got any choice. And so they hire fast, which is a mistake because they're not recruiting all the time. And then they make a worse mistake fire slow. That's horrible. Because they bring on a guy, and let's say he only lies once in a while. He only steals occasionally. He only pisses off a What happens is that Lord, you may have spent years building this culture, right? Bring one guy in and he can destroy it in two months. Because they go, well, this guy shows up late. You're still paying him. This guy lied. Nobody seemed to care. This guy stole the nail gun. Nobody noticed. I mean, come on, right? So it'll kill your culture. I have a saying, Ron, if you look at your company and you figure and you, and you say, okay, I had to let everybody go. They're all gone. I have to start a company, you know, three blocks down the, the street. I have no con non-compete. Anybody that you wouldn't hire back, you should fire. And think about that. So if you're looking at your company right now, if you look at all your employees, if you had to let them all go, anybody that you wouldn't hire back, you should fire. Because you know in your gut the wrong person. You know, when should you fire somebody the minute you think about it, actually? <laughs> like, and we all have that employee. Oh my God, it's John. Every time they call, you go, oh crap. I mean, it's we've been there, right? Because they kill your energy. And you just know every time they call you, right? Get rid of them. So you the truth is you hire slow because you're always recruiting, <clears throat> and you fire fast because they can kill the company. But if you hire fast and fire slow, <clears throat> bad idea, right? Last one is recruiting is a project that ends. Contractors think in terms of projects. It has a start, a beginning, it has a middle, and it has an end. That is not true for marketing. It is not true for recruiting. It never ends. <clears throat> you should always be marketing and always be recruiting. <clears throat> you can't look at it like a project. It doesn't work. It's an ongoing process. It is not a project. If you look at it like a project, you're going to make big mistakes and you're going to hire the wrong people because you got to hire, you're hiring fast and firing slow. So yeah, go over more time. So if you recruit all the time, just when you need somebody, if you get employees are not expensive, the best thing to invest, pay the right price for employees. You can do it yourself, hire some help to get it done. Recruit outside the construction industry, not just in the construction industry. Hire slow and fire fast and don't look at it like a project. It's an ongoing process. If you awesome. did all those things, you'd be way better off. <laughs> awesome, man. So much knowledge, so much great stuff. I mean, it's it's awesome having you back on the show. I mean, I look forward Thank to you having, for having you on you. again. But for all the construction champions out there, if they wanted to connect with you, learn more about what you're doing, <laughs> where's the best places for them to do that? Well, they can go to contractorstaffingsource.com. 
and there's a little button they can ask me a question. My, I give my cell phone. It's 415-599-9006. Feel free to call me. My personal email is paul at paulsandeman.com. If you need help, just let us know. You know, <clears throat> we're really good at what we do. We pretty much, we can find you the people you need. But if you want to give me a call, I'll be happy to discuss it with you. Awesome, man. Well, thank you for being on the show today. Thank you. I appreciate being here, Ron. All right, construction champions, another episode where we learned not just about AI, not just about hiring, but you still have to do the hard stuff if you want to do it yourself. I loved when Paul was talking about responding in real time, because all I could think about was the guy out there on the job site that's trying to hire somebody so he doesn't have to be on the job site, but can't respond to that person because they're on the job site. How many times has this happened to you? You get a great candidate to come in, walk through the door, fill out the application, and then you don't get back to them until maybe the next day. And by then, they're like, oh, I already have an interview with such and such over here. And I think that's going to work out. Or they just decided, hey, it was an in-the-moment thing. They were aggravated with where they were at. And then they decided, ah, well, I'm just going to continue sticking it out where I'm at because you you didn't have the time to get back to them. And it's not even that you didn't have the time. You didn't even see it because you were busy out on the job site. So think about that. As we grow these companies and we continue to scale, people will be something that's always in the equation. I love when Paul talks about recruiting never stops because it doesn't. You start to develop a bench. You start to develop people around in a network of people that as you grow or as you that bottom 10 percent is constantly leaving, you can bring people in immediately. And it's not something where you're scrambling to go do. Well, name, name any successful sports team that doesn't recruit all the time. It mm -hmm. doesn't exist. I love that. That's a great analogy for that because that's what – that's what happens is like we hire somebody and we're like, yeah, rock and roll. And then we just continue doing it how we've always done it. And then next thing, we're not prepared when the, when the next person quits. So you have to let somebody go. Somebody's not a fit. So remember that as you're out there doing your hiring, make sure you're continuing to do it. Some of the best people I've ever met at hiring are the people that are always talking to everybody. Always asking their guys, you know, hey, who do you know? Your best people are probably hanging out with best people too. They probably just work somewhere else. And then when Paul talks about thinking outside of the construction industry, I couldn't agree more. Being somebody that came from no construction experience into the construction industry, I feel like it is an untapped place, especially the veteran community. Guys are looking, girls are looking for what does that transition look like. And the construction industry fits our veteran community very, very well. And you're going to run into a lot of people that have discipline. They can check the box. They understand that if you give them a list of things or tasks to do, they just get them done. So Construction Champions, make sure you go check out our website, constructionchampions.com. Dot com. You check out all of our great sponsors. You might just see Paul's link down there in the comments as well to go check out what he has going on. Set up a time to talk to him. And until next time, be the champion you were meant to be. Champions, I am super excited to talk to you about our partner, Contractor Staffing Source. Paul and his team have over 40 years, or Paul himself has over 40 years of experience in construction, and he knows what it takes to not only grow and scale a company, but also hire the absolute best for your company. And with this partnership, we have put together an amazing bundle of free resources from his free million-dollar hire course to a free disassessment to a free cognitive ability assessment. All you have to do is go click the links at Construction Champions Podcast 
or in the show notes for this to access all these free resources. This is the kind of partnerships that Construction Champions Podcast will be bringing. Ones that add value, just like all of our other ones. This one adds massive value to your company and where you're headed in the future. So you can continue to grow and become the champion you were meant to be.